Now that Thanos has gotten rid of half of the population of the universe with a snap of his fingers, he seems pretty much invincible, despite the destroyed Infinity Gauntlet. In Avengers 4, one of the Avengers will have to deliver that final blow, and a lot of fans are theorizing that the God of Thunder, Thor, will be the one to do it, and for good reason. But before we get into the details of this epic battle between the Asgardian King Thor and the Mad Titan Thanos, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our MC videos. Ah, oh, come on, you know you want to do it. For those of you who remember the final battle between the Avengers and Thanos in the final scenes of Infinity War, how could I forget? You can recall the moment between Thor and Thanos. In this scene, Thor takes his new weapon he received from Mitri of Nidavellir, known as Stormbreaker, and swings it with all his might straight into Thanos' chest. Oi, that's gotta hurt! This hammer clearly left a mark on Thanos as it brought him down to his knees, where he's subjected to even more pain as Thor takes Stormbreaker and jams it even deeper into his chest. Had <laughs> a boy, Thor. But instead of going for the killing blow, Thor stops and listens to Thanos as he mutters his words. Thanos reluctantly says, You should have gone for the head. In this case, you can't help but agree with the Mad Titan. Why didn't Thor go for the head and save all of humanity the headache of trying to defeat Thanos? It turns out, there's a reason for this. The short answer to this is that Thor was being selfish. Everybody rips on Star-Lord, how about Thor over here? Thor wanted to get revenge on Thanos for all that he's done to him. Killing him would have made Thor's vengeance bending quest too short and sweet. He wanted to look into the eyes of the Mad Titan as a commemoration to Thanos' pain. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to stop Thanos from snapping his fingers and escaping Thor's grasp. So, what did we learn about Thor through his actions of failing to kill Thanos when he could have? We learned that he's susceptible to letting his emotions cloud his better judgment, which begs the question, should this one-on-one -on -one battle happen again in Avengers 4? Will Thor finish the job this time around? Find out! Same Avengers place, same Avengers time! The first question we need to ask ourselves is, is Thor actually powerful enough to defeat Thanos? Keep in mind that we're assuming Thor has full access to Stormbreaker, and Thanos can still access the power of all six Infinity Stones. According to Eitri, the hammer was specifically created to resist the might of all six Infinity Stones and kill Thanos. In the battle between Thor and Thanos, this proves to be true. Thanos generates a beam attack that flared all the colors of the six Infinity Stones. Stormbreaker easily pierces through this beam attack with ease, like a steak knife through butter, baby! Mm -mm. That being said, Thor definitely has the upper hand here, wielding the only weapon in the world the universe that can resist the might of the Infinity Gauntlet. But what if Thor doesn't have access to Stormbreaker? As we learn through the MCU, Thor is no rudimentary hero. He's extremely powerful, and this was showcased in the fight against Hulk in Thor Ragnarok. He didn't have Miel nearby his side, but still ended up winning this battle by summoning a vicious blast of lightning, which acts as the crutch to the God of Thunder's source of power. Although Thanos isn't the Incredible Hulk. In fact, he's much stronger than the Hulk. We know this because the two went head to head in Infinity War. Man, what an opening scene. And Thanos literally scared Hulk into the depths of Bruce Banner's soul. Once you take into consideration that Thanos has been hit with Thor's lightning blast before, and it merely pushed him back a couple feet, the verdict is that Thor's gonna need Stormbreaker just to have a chance at defeating Thanos. He should also aim for the head this time, uh, it might help. As we know, Thanos is a very powerful villain, probably the most robust villain the MCU has seen thus far. So what are his chances at vanquishing the almighty Norse god? The six Infinity Stones allow Thanos to have complete control over six various dimensions time, space, power, mind, reality, and the soul, making him virtually omnipotent. Well, Thanos definitely takes the cake over Thor in terms of raw strength, because he's an eternal being who surpasses Asgardians in all aspects. But Thanos is smart and aware of what Stormbreaker and Thor are capable of. This means that if he wants to win, he's gonna have to get creative. His best bet is to manipulate Thor into battle by using the Infinity Stones to beat him mentally instead of physically. Perhaps play mind games with him or manipulate time and space to throw him off guard. Remember when half the Avengers disappeared into nothingness at the end of Infinity War? Of course I remember, why would you ask that? Well, there are some fan theories that Thanos domesticated them inside the Soul Gem. If this is the case, then Thanos will most likely have some extra juice. This can also be the defining quality of what may allow Thanos to vanquish Thor and have him join the rest of his Avengers in the Soul Stone. Regardless, an old school fist fight isn't gonna cut it for Thanos. He needs to approach Thor with caution and weigh out his options to see what strategy will suit him best. Many Marvel fanatics are anticipating a huge fight between Thor and Thanos in Avengers 4, but what are the odds of this actually happening? With so many characters wiped out, it's up to the original six Avengers to do the job. The strongest of the team being Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, and Thor. Some fans think Iron Man can potentially be the one, but quite simply, he just isn't strong enough. 
His advances in technology can only get him so far in defeating the Mad Titan, but unfortunately, it's not far enough. The selfless Captain America is in the same spot, and without giving away any spoilers, he doesn't defeat Thanos in the comics either. This leaves Hulk and Thor. As we already know, Hulk alone won't even come close, and as of right now, he has no intentions of fighting Thanos. The Russo brothers said it themselves that they consider Thor and Thanos the main characters of Infinity War. That being said, Thor has a very predominant story arc throughout his films, starting from the first debut movie up until Infinity War. His role amongst the Avengers becomes gradually more prevalent, perhaps leading up to the ultimate climax. Thor is also the only one who can wield the weapon that can ultimately put an end to Thanos. Lastly, Thor is a god and Thanos is a titan. In what ancient mythology? stories have gods and titans not gone head-to-head, -head, eventually leading the either one's demise? In Avengers 4, it's very likely that Thor is the one to deliver the killing blow. He'll most likely get help from his fellow Avengers and maybe even Captain Marvel, but he needs to be the one to do the heroic deed and save all of humanity as we know it. Come on, Thor, will you just do it? Just do it for us, please! Captain Marvel is one of the most powerful superheroes in the entire Marvel Universe, so her likely inclusion in Avengers 4 must mean big things are happening and Captain Marvel will be a major player. We think that because she's so overpowered, even those in possession of the Infinity Stones won't stand a chance. We're also going to look at how her other form, Binary, may come into play. But before we blow your mind and shock your system with our Captain Marvel theory, subscribe to CBR and don't forget to ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our MCU videos. Captain Marvel's possible appearance in Avengers 4 has been one of the most talked about stories since Infinity War. We can't wait to see what her involvement is in the next Avengers film, but we feel like it'll be huge. In fact, we think she's the key to saving the day and defeating Thanos. Why? Probably because she's one of the most powerful superheroes ever. But let's give you a little background on Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers was originally a supporting love interest for another hero, but she ended up getting powers when Marvel protected her from an explosion, fusing his DNA with hers. She then fought for justice under the name Miss Marvel, and had held many names such as Binary and Warbird before eventually taking up the mantle as Captain Marvel in 2012, despite losing both her powers and memory at one point. Since then, she's back more powerful than ever, and as you've undoubtedly heard, she's getting her own movie next year. It's the first Marvel movie to be focused on a female superhero. Now that you know a little bit about her, let's get to Captain Marvel's involvement in Avengers 4, and how we think she'll defeat Thanos because we all know it's coming. Not only does Carol Danvers have tons of military training from her NASA and Air Force days since she was a pilot and very accomplished soldier, but she's also crazy powerful. In fact, she's so powerful the president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, had this to say about her. She is as powerful a character as we've ever put in a movie. Her powers are off the charts, and when she's introduced, she will be by far the strongest character we've ever had. So basically, Thanos and every bad guy in the universe should be quaking in their brightly colored boots and capes right now. Just judging by her powers seen in the comics and the Captain Marvel trailer, the rumors of her being a powerful badass are pretty legit. Here's a quick rundown of her abilities. She can fly six times the speed of light, yes, six times, while also having superhuman strength, stamina, and endurance, all of which, of course, is pretty common when it comes to superheroes. But here's one Carol Danvers has that most superheroes don't have cosmic awareness. This gives her insight into threats in the universe that matter to her. She also has some nifty skills, being able to shoot energy blasts from her hands and absorb massive amounts of energy back into herself. So maybe she can reabsorb Thanos' attacks and repurpose that energy. That would be amazing. It's not too far of a stretch to think she could tap into the energy from Thanos' attacks and use it against him. It's like jujitsu, but you know, with superhero energy instead. We're led to believe she can do this because in the comics, she has repurposed the energy from Black black holes and nuclear weapons and was just fine. Thanos won't be a walk in the park, but we can see her being able to defeat him with his own power. We honestly hope to see the full extent of her abilities in the new movie, and maybe this theory comes true in a last-ditch effort type of way when the Avengers are backed into a corner getting pounded by Thanos, and she saves the day by redirecting that energy. That would be beautiful, and no one would expect it. While in the MCU, Avengers 4 will be the first time Carol Danvers goes up against Thanos on the big screen, this isn't the case in the comics. Captain Marvel is actually a part of the Avengers team during one of the countless times they go up against the Mad Titan. In one of the major Thanos battles that inspired Infinity War, Danvers and the Avengers faced off against the villain in his Black Order when he was attacking Earth. 
All this encounter did was confirm what we already knew about Captain Marvel. She's so powerful she can put up a very good fight against someone in possession of the Infinity Stones. As a quick refresher, the Infinity Stones were created after the universe exploded into existence and six singularities formed the stones. These singularities were most likely gravitational singularities, which is the center of a black hole. Still with us? Great! So basically, since Captain Marvel can tap into the energy of white holes, which are the opposite energy of what created the Infinity Stones, she should be able to counter the stone's power. Remember how we previously mentioned that she could absorb energy? Well, what if she uses her power in her binary form to absorb the energy of the Infinity Stones to make Thanos vulnerable? Maybe in this process she even breaks the stones, using the opposite energy of what created them, so they can never be used again. Either way, we're willing to bet that Carol Danvers will defeat Thanos and help save the world alongside the Avengers. Expectations are obviously high, but we can't wait to see her live up to all the hype. We think Captain Marvel's the key to taking out Thanos, but what do you think? People don't simply walk into Asgard. Oh, wait, that's Mordor. Power bad. Anyway, with the powerful presence of Odin and his highly trained militia, it's enough to make evildoers think twice before invading. Is it possible the Mad Titan, Thanos, was just mad enough to try to invade it? After all, Asgard is a place that is as powerful as it is dangerous. But before we talk about all the crazy things Thanos almost did in his pursuit of power, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our MCU videos. There's no question that the realm of Asgard was once an incredible place, resplendent with treasures. Naturally, it makes sense that it also wasn't the sort of place you could just stroll into. The average citizen of Asgard is far tougher than the average human, and Asgardian soldiers are truly something to be feared. In most cases, gaining access to Asgard involves utilizing the Bifrost Bridge, which can take you to any of the nine realms. But this also means contending with the Guardian Heimdall. Needless to say, it's a fairly defensible place. But the Bifrost Bridge and all the soldiers in Asgard weren't as powerful as the mighty Odin. The Allfather is much more than a simple figurehead. He may look like a kindly old man, but he's an absolute behemoth in terms of power. And there was a time in which all he wanted was to grow even stronger. In Thor Ragnarok, we were introduced to Odin's daughter Hela, who reveals that there was a time when Odin was an unstoppable conqueror. Eventually, he saw the error in his ways, but Hela was determined to cause as much destruction as possible, which ended up getting her banished. Some fans believe that during this time, Odin managed to acquire the ultra-powerful Infinity Stones, and if this was the case, it would make sense that Thanos would have been trying to get into Asgard for quite some time. While Hela was tearing through his vault, we saw an artifact very reminiscent of the Infinity Gauntlet, which Hela quickly deemed a fake. Why would Odin have a fake gauntlet? unless it was to replace one which had been real at some time. We know it takes a powerful magical item to contain an Infinity Stone, and during Avengers Infinity War, we learned the lengths Thanos went to in order to obtain his gauntlet. He had to threaten Eitri to get him to forge the Infinity Gauntlet, and then smashed his hands for good measure when he was done. If he thought Odin may have an Infinity Gauntlet already, it would be all the more reason for him to take an interest in invading Asgard, and if Odin did have have one or more Infinity Stones, it would make sense he had a magical object with which to hold it. During Captain America The First Avenger, we saw Red Skull seeking out an artifact known as the Tesseract, which we later learned was the Space Stone. He revealed that, at some point, the Space Stone had been in the possession of Odin before it made its way to Earth. But if you think about it, wouldn't Asgard have been the safest place for an item such as the Space Stone? Could Odin have removed it in order to rid himself of the temptation of harnessing its considerable power? Or maybe he knew Thanos? or someone like him was gunning for the stones and thought it was safer to hide them in different places across the galaxy. We have reason to believe that Odin may have had much more than just the space stone, but for right now, that's enough of a reason for Thanos to have tried to invade at some point. 
even if Odin didn't have all the Infinity Stones in his possession, it's likely he at least knew where they were or had some clues as to their location. This would have made Asgard a prime target for someone like Thanos. Now that we've established a motive, let's talk about how Thanos may have tried to gain access to Asgard. As soon as Odin perished during Thor Ragnarok, we saw his daughter Hela pop up, crush Mjolnir, and start dismantling the peaceful reign her father had spent ages cultivating. Hey, she may have been evil, but she apparently knew how to get things done. There was another time when Asgard was profoundly vulnerable, and it was when Odin was very much alive. In Asgard, there's a magical force known as the Odin Force, which conveniently provides Odin with his magical powers. However, maintaining his considerable powers is pretty exhausting, and sometimes Odin just has to kick back and recharge. Because an Odin nap just doesn't sound cool enough, Odin occasionally sinks into Odin's sleep, a time during which he and Asgard are pretty vulnerable. We also know that Loki likes to use the Odin sleep to get up to his own schemes, and because there was a time when Loki was working with Thanos, it's not too hard to believe he could have filled Thanos in when Odin was out cold during the first Thor movie. Loki can be incredibly useful at times, but if there's one thing he isn't, it's trustworthy. Thanos likely didn't expect Loki to hand over the powerful magical artifact, so he would have probably wanted to explore Odin's vault on his own. As evidenced by their interaction during Avengers Infinity War, Thanos is sadly not fooled or impressed by Loki's shenanigans. That may not have been Thanos' first run at Asgard either. If Odin was accumulating stones and possibly even an Infinity Gauntlet, type device of his own ages ago, Thanos may have had his eye on Asgard for some time. If Thanos went up against Odin in the past, we're guessing he would have learned his lesson, which explains why he only attempted to enter Asgard again when Odin was asleep or deceased. It would also be one possible explanation for why he took on Loki as an ally. It's not that Loki isn't talented in his own right, but he also represents an important link to Asgard. During Infinity War, we learned there's nothing Thanos wouldn't do in order to possess the Infinity Stones. The idea of Odin having the stones, or even just one of them, and then choosing to ditch them, probably seems unfathomable to someone like Thanos. We're just saying, it seems unlikely that Thanos wouldn't have tried to get to Asgard at some point in the past. Perhaps that could be another reason why Odin ultimately chose to scatter the stones instead of keeping them in his vault. That was one heck of a theory to take in. Do you think Thanos ever explored the realm of Asgard in the hopes of finding a powerful magical artifact? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU videos like this one. Thanks for watching.